I am Vanessa Fowler. I teach at Via Corda Elementary in La Puente, California. My name is Brandon Hazard and I'm the Ed Tech Specialist here at the First Academy in Orlando, Florida. My name is Stephanie Campos. My name is Chris Daines. I'm Lauren Marone and I teach at North Paulding High School. STEM is the big catch word right now because everybody wants to make sure that we are preparing our students for the 21st century learning. We're seeing kids who are not necessarily prepared for their futures if we continue to work the traditional ways of education. Whether the kids decide to go into a career right after high school or decide to go into college, a lot of the you know professions that are going to be available to them, especially my girls in here, having early experiences will hopefully motivate them to go into those fields. Critical thinking, collaboration, being able to code spherules, it actually combines all of those, which for me, it's like a big, a big deal. The learning curve can be as steep as you really want it to be. I think it's accessibility and it's usability. Kindergarten students, all the way up to high school and beyond students can use it. The focus is gonna be on how it's used and that's where the challenges are gonna come in. We've done a kangaroo, so we set the motor speed, 255, and we set the duration to 5 seconds. Everything we do is in a group, so they're constantly working with their peers and working with that and building those skills to use in their future careers. As long as those systems are sound and in place, students will learn those types of skills. They'll learn to talk respectfully with one another. They'll learn to collaborate and how to ask questions to get more out of each other. You work hard and sometimes you fail at so many things in life, um, but you can sort of take a microcosm of that into the Sphero land where they're trying iterations of trying to make a robot do something that they want it to do. And it sort of teaches them a new way of persevering and the rewards they can have for that perseverance. A lot of times students will get incorrect answers on a worksheet and they get it wrong and they're like, oh well. But they need to be able to think critically about why they got it wrong and be able to question and figure out and problem solve. And when they're doing worksheets, that's not really a fun thing to do and there's no purpose in that. But when they are working on a Sphero project and they don't get it to work the way they want it to, well now they've got buy-in, they have a reason to continue that struggle to figure it out. Thinking about what's going to happen, why is it going to happen, how can they change the variables to change the outcome. So relating that aspect of it, they can relate it to other aspects in their life as well. Sometimes when the kids do the programs, they, they finish the task, but then they want to go further. What if I did this? What, what if I had this block? What can it do? Then that triggers into something else where they're now div divining a whole nother program than what we started off with. The reason I love um, technology is so much because you can make stuff um, because, um, because there's so much things you can do on technology. Another thing that we've gotten our teachers hooked on is, you know, if your class was an elective, how many students would sign up for your class? And that makes teachers think like, okay, if I'm just having my kids sit and doing worksheets, how many are going to want to come to school every day? Whereas if we can integrate something that will engage them in a creative way, they're going to be more likely to come. And we've had teachers do that in the morning and it's had a dramatic impact on their um, attendance rates and tardy rates already. It's important in that it teaches them skills that will be, that are valid today and in the future. And um, it does it in a way that doesn't feel like classwork.